In this tutorial 20, we will start chapter 6. We will first look at how to describe the complex motion of fluid element. And then I will introduce one pair of functions. That is, the stream function and the velocity potential. Then we finally discuss some of the physical significance. Then we will continue our discussion about STEM in the next tutorial. In chapter 6, we look at small fluid element instead of a control volume as a whole. Therefore, we shall learn how to describe its motion. A general motion of a fluid element can be decomposed into these four components. Translation has already been covered by velocity and acceleration. And what's new is the remaining three. And here are some definitions that describe linear deformation, rotation, and angular deformations. In multi-variable calculus, you have learned about divergence and curl. Now you know their physical significance in the context of fluid mechanics. I think you know how to compute this quantity in the previous slide already. But let us just do a quick example. So let's compute all the partial derivatives. So the volumetric dilation rate is just the divergence, and that is, and this one is the curl. And the rotation factor is just half of this. And we compute the shear strain rate in the three directions. And only this guy is covered in the lecture notes. Now I introduce the pair of functions. The velocity potential and the stream function. The domain of the velocity factor we are considering in the fluid mechanics is usually the whole two space or three space. So this assumption is always whole and you can just neglect it. You have also heard about the velocity potential in multivariable calculus. So I won't talk about it. But you may not know that in 2D case, if the divergence is zero, then there is a stream function per side which is a set component of the vector potential of velocity. You may Google about what is vector potential, but I repeat, Psi is only exists in 2D case. These two functions are really important. If these two functions exist, then there are some good properties for the flow. We will look at how these two functions describe these properties later in this video as well as in the next video. In a two-dimensional flow, if either Psi and Phi solve the Laplace equation, then both of the functions exist. We call such flow as potential flows, and we are talking about it in the next video. If you are interested, actually Psi is the harmonic conjugate of Phi, and such pair of nice functions are studied extensively in complex analysis in mathematics. Here are the equations involved in the previous slide in both Cartesian and polar coordinates. But I want to talk about this one in the top. Actually, this equation holds for any flows. This is the same mass conservation requirement as we mentioned in chapter 3 and chapter 5. We can write this continuity equation more compactly as Under steady condition, anything partial t goes out, and if we further assume that the flow is incompressible, then rho is a constant, so this moves to the right-hand side and disappears. Not surprisingly, we get the divergence equals zero. Also, this pair of equation is called the Cauchy-Riemann equations. This is really important in the study of analytic function in a complex plane. And this pair is the Cauchy-Riemann equation given in the polar coordinates. 
Now, we work on an example about stream function and velocity potential. To show their existence, we have to compute the divergence and the curve. So let's start working. Since the flow is 2D, the X component and the Y component of the curve goes to zero. And for the Z component, it is, it is equal to this determinant. And for convenience, let's expand U and V. So, this one exists. For the divergence, so the stream function also exists. We go on and calculate the stream function and potential function from the given equation. We call that the constant here is in fact a function in y. We also require that phi y equals v and phi y equals And this is one of the velocity potential. Then we repeat the procedure for Psi. And here the constant is a function in x. We require negative of phi x is u. But negative of phi x is So, one choice of Psi is We can do the same thing for polar coordinates but it is too tiring for me to do all these computations So I let you to try this problem yourself Note that the book does not provide any formula for curl so I provide a other method to show that the flow is irrotational, that is to use the Laplace equation. If the stream function solves the Laplace equation, then the flow is irrotational and the velocity potential exists. And then you can do the most annoying part which is to solve these equations. But actually if you have learned about potential flow already, then you can immediately recognize the flow is a source plus a doublet. So you do not need to do all these boring and long computations and directly write down the answer. So let's do one more example. If the flow is irrotational, then the curl must go zero. But the set component of curl is the Laplacian of stream function, and that is 2a. That is non-zero. So, the flow is not irrotational. The message I want to give in this example is that incompressible and irrotational are two separate adjectives about a flow. One does not imply another. Now, we start to discuss what is so useful and beautiful about the two functions Psi and Phi. First, they can be used to visualize a flow. You may wonder why the stream function is called the stream function. It is because the stream function is constant along stream lines. So let's prove this statement. For Psi equals to a constant, that means d Psi equals zero. And d Psi, as you recall from multivariable calculus, and from the equation in previous slide, this is negative 3, and this is u. So, this is 0, and we get, 
which is the streamlined equation in chapter 3. Also, we have something called the equipotential line. That is, the velocity potential equals a constant along the, along the line. What's so special about this line is that the equipotential line is always perpendicular to the streamlines. Some of you are familiar with this if you have studied E and N. So let's prove this statement again. If phi is a constant along this line, then d phi is zero. So d phi equals and we multiply by the slope here, then from high school mathematics, you know that the two lines must be perpendicular to each other. And again, this is heavily studied in complex analysis. Another property about potential flow is that if both of the function psi and phi exist, that is, the flow is a potential flow, and we further assume that the flow is infiscate and steady, then we can apply the Bologna equation between any two points in the flow. There is no need for us to restrict ourselves onto streamlines anymore. So let's work on an example about that. So the flow is infiscate, and of course steady since the time does not appear in the velocity potential. And then the flow must also be irrotational since the velocity potential exists. So what's left is the incompressible requirement. Let's check if the flow is incompressible. So let's go on and calculate the divergence. And that is the Laplacian of the velocity potential. So the flow is incompressible. So the Bologna equation is applicable. Let's write that down. An elevation change can be neglected. So this becomes zero. And let's let this point as one and this point as two. To compare the pressure, we have to first calculate the magnitude of the velocity. From our previous calculation, this is the x component of velocity, and this is the y component of the velocity. So the magnitude is just and V one square equals So we can plug in a formula. And we are done with this example. But let's not raise this velocity field and find the streamline too. So let's apply the definition. But unluckily, this differential equation is not separable since we have this ugly term here. So some of you don't know how to solve this differential equation, but you have learned the fact that if the stream function exists and it is constant along some lines, then those lines are streamlines. So let's try to find a stream function. And stream function here exists since we have just shown that the flow is incompressible. And we also have so we calculate that So this one is a stream function 
and a streamline is and we are done with this example the message i want to give in this example is that you indeed have learned a new method of finding streamline so i leave this problem for your exercise although the question changed the velocity potential to stream function you can follow a similar procedure to complete this question but in fact I completed this question without writing a single thing. With my calculation, I can finish this question. It is because the velocity field is just a constant. The stream function has just the linear terms in x and y. Since the velocity is constant, then by Bologna equation, the pressure everywhere is uniform. So I immediately know that the c part is zero. So today we finished so many things about fluid kinematics, stream function, and velocity potential. So see you in the next video, and put any problems and feedback in the comments below. Thank you so much.